Well, we're curious about how those negotiations are going, so we have a great perspective on it. Joining me now for more on those negotiations is Teamsters Local 399 Principal Officer Lindsay Doherty uh, for the Hollywood Teamsters. Lindsay, welcome back to Inside the Issues. It's great to see you. Great to see you. Thanks for having me again. Absolutely. We're so curious about these negotiations. You and I previewed these when we talked about the SAG after and WGA strikes last year. Here we are, at least the beginning of them. So this was a joint negotiation between the Teamsters, also IATSE and the Hollywood Basic Crafts about health and pension. Just give us a sense of how they've been going and what comes next for the Teamsters. Well, we met with the studios uh, last week on Monday jointly with IATSE and the other Hollywood Basic Crafts, which include Lyuna, IBW, Plasters and Plumbers. And look, these are our bargaining partners that we've bargained with many times for many years. Um, so we obviously have relationships with these labor relations executives, but we have a long way to go because our contracts don't actually ex expire until July 31st of this year. So IATSE is now in bargaining for their 13 locals that they have in Los Angeles, and we'll move on to the area standards agreement, which covers locals across the country. And then finally, the Teamsters and the Hollywood Basic Crafts will continue our bargaining with our craft-specific contracts beginning in June. Um, but the process has started. It's obviously, you know, friendly right now, but that's, you know, oftentimes how we go into negotiations by exchanging proposals and then working through um, each side, each proposal one by one. Um, so, like I said, we still have some time. We have many months to go until we resolve all of our issues and get tentative agreements, which is the goal for all of us as negotiators. May they remain friendly. That is my wish for you. And also, I hope everyone gets what they want. I just want a peaceful world. But of course, it's really important that everyone really advocates for what they need. And I know you do that so well on behalf of the Teamsters. So that's health and pension benefits. When you talk about what's coming up for Teamsters specifically uh, starting in around June, as you say, just outline the major issues that you see and what the Teamsters need more of and more from the studios. Well, I think most importantly, our members have sacrificed a lot um, due to the doodle strikes last year. Um, there's obviously been a loss of financials, um, loss of work. And so compensation is key, especially when we're talking about the inflation that they've also endured for the last several years. And they have been getting 3% increases, which is just not cutting it. Um, obviously, benefits, pension, health care is important, but also, you know, more guardrails around these working conditions for our members that work long hours that they don't often get um, the compensation that they deserve for the sacrifices that they make for their families day in and day out. And then additionally, like we're, you know, it's no surprise that we're going to be dealing with artificial intelligence guardrails as well, because we want to ensure that our members continue to work and it, artificial intelligence is a threat. Um, so it is a priority of all of us going in as union leadership to ensure that there is our protections for our members. AI, of course, was also a big issue in those SAG-AFTRA and WGA strikes as historic strikes. And I have to imagine, as a union leader, you paid very close attention for various reasons, including just getting a tactical sense of how to handle these negotiations and how to handle these issues. We talked about pattern bargaining. We talked about unions and solidarity not crossing picket lines. What do you feel like you learned from the SAG-AFTRA and WGA strikes? What will you bring to this moment? Well, I've, we definitely learned that us as together, Hollywood unions, we're going to be much stronger. And I think, you know, in the, in the onset of the writer's strike, the unions weren't together as they should have been, I will admit. Um, I think now we've we've seen we've made such great strides in the labor movement here in Hollywood. We are most certainly together as unions and you're seeing it not just here in Los Angeles, but you're seeing it nationwide and even worldwide now. Um, but that's we that's very important for us to continue that um, because we obviously supported WG and sag -AFTRA, and we know that their leadership and membership are going to be supporting our members as well. And that's what we have to just ensure that moving forward, we continue to do that. And then also presenting these issues now, um, even while we're bargaining before us as Teamsters go into bargaining so that it's no surprise to the employers so that this is something that we're talking about. Um, because, again, we want to ensure that our members continue to work in this industry and have a sustainable life here, especially in Hollywood. Well, members of SAG-AFTRA and WGA are certainly walking the walk and, and maybe at least talking the talk. We'll see about walking the walk uh, and talking the talk, including on the Oscars stage. I'll play a little bit of what we saw this past weekend. 
before we celebrate ourselves, let's have a very well-deserved round of applause for the people who work behind the scenes, the Teamsters, the truck drivers, the lighting crew, Sally, Cameron, Gaffers, Rips. That's right. All the people who refused to cross the picket lines, there they are. I'm sure it was a big moment for y'all. Uh, it felt good to get that solidarity. Talking to talk, but as I say, walking the walk, question mark. Do you expect uh, no picket line crossing mutual? Well, look, everybody has different contracts. And honestly, you know, in my opinion, if there was a picket line, um, you know, for Teamsters or IATSE, there wouldn't be any production happening for an actor to even go to work. Um, so I don't think we're going to get to that point. And, and look, like, and, you know, these strikes are fresh on the minds of everybody because our members are still feeling the pain and most importantly the the employers are feeling the pain as well so ultimately as i mentioned before we have a long way to go to bargain and that's what we're going to do a strike is the last resort and we want to get the best contract that we can for our members without a strike but look like we have to we have to fight for our members and fight for their needs and wants and that's what we have to focus on for the next several months yeah, and just in a quick moment, as you say, if the Teamsters decide that we're not going to do production, production essentially shuts down. But there is always offshoring. Today there was a statement that suggests that maybe uh, Teamsters have some solidarity on that front too, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, you and I, Global Union, which affiliates have over 500,000 workers worldwide, came out in support um, of IATSE today, which IATSE is also an affiliate of them. Um, and they said, your fight is our fight. And look, this is something that we as unions have been looking at because this is nothing new. The employers of the motion picture industry have been outsourcing work for many, many years. Um, right. They chased the film and television tax credits worldwide. Um, obviously, countries have expanded that throughout the last several years, even more so than, than we've ever seen. And then you have companies like Netflix that is a global company, and they have production centers in various countries and various continents. And so yeah. it's something that we're looking at, but also maintaining that, you know, we have to ensure that we have a healthy, competitive, and even expand our film and television tax credit here in California, but also and make sure that we have the solidarity, not just nationwide, but worldwide with all of these other affiliates and other unions that have entertainment workers that work on these productions everywhere. Yeah, a lot of actors, it'll, they have these no-strike clauses, so it'll largely be up to them, depending on the contract, about whether they would go to another country to sort of cross this picket line that the Teamsters might set up. Uh, in our last moment here, uh, the Teamsters general president met with Biden, also met with Trump, and you were there. Uh, just tell us about what was discussed. Yeah, so our international has had the opportunity to have all the presidential candidates come to our headquarters in Washington, D.C., where we had rank and file members ask specific questions to all of the um, candidates about, you know, how what their thoughts were on issues such as right to work, um, you know, bankruptcy law, you know, antitrust law concerning companies like Amazon. And they all were asked the same questions and had the opportunity to answer all of them. So um, it was it was great to have um, not just, you know, we had a former president, but our current president at our international headquarters, which has never happened in this way in, in, within a month. And so yeah. it was obviously, um, I was happy to be a part of it to hear what they had to say. But ultimately, you know, we're going through this process where we want our members to be engaged and informed and also participate and that we just don't simply endorse a candidate, but we want our members to be part of that process um, and have a say and a voice in who we actually you know, endorse as the president of the United States as the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. Yeah, it's just another illustration of the extraordinary times and the extraordinary time for labor. And of course, production relies on labor and there is a AMPTP studio side to all this too. It's a side that we will talk about as this evolves. But I just want to thank you so much for coming in and speaking so clearly to the issues and representing uh, your chapter so well, Linda Darty. Always a pleasure. Thank you.